Hey, this is Nicholas with the Backyard Tardis here with another Random Thoughts podcast slash audiobook highlight for the High Republic Light of the Jedi book. Um, You're about to see me explain why I got into this and ramble on way too long. This was the first of three attempts to review this. I've had my phone uh, audio not work. I had some rain background noise um, because, you know, it went from 114 degrees too raining in three days um that just made it horrible and i've wanted to do this as part of a thing with extra techie to make it really good and i was trying to make it more concise my original one i just rambled and was nonsense but i decided you know what that is authentic me unedited that so i'm just tacking this on in behind you're about to hear another intro from me um now i'm making an already too long review of an audiobook along um, but, uh, yeah. And the other thing I constantly reference and I'm going to link extra techies review of this. Um, he didn't start reviewing the high Republic till the book after this and all the comics and all that. He's done great reviews, but he didn't actually review this book, or at least I can't see that on his channel. Um, probably because he liked this book so much that then he decided to, I'm assuming take notes and all the stuff that he does with the next books but he puts so much work in it he's writing so much down as he goes through this book that i i understand why maybe he just read this one as a fun and then decided to do that uh but uh with that as always um something i also forgot to mention in the video there's going to be spoilers spoilers Hey, Nicholas with the Backyard Tardis here with another uh, audiobook review. This time we're looking at Star Wars Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule and narrated by Mark Thompson. Before we get into that, though, we're going to get into why we're doing this. Because this is part of the High Republic. And um, I'm, I'm just spoiler right here. I like this. I like this this book. But going back uh, to a little bit of history here, Extra Techie, Sean of Extra Star Wars, he did uh, a video on the first book of the throne, The Heir to the Empire. And I kind of noticed he had a little bit of a negative take, which is surprising because this is my favorite book out of, or trilogy, out of all these Star Wars uh, expanded media that I've read. And I've read a lot of it. I've read most of what was uh, axed away by Disney, said non-canon anymore. And since then, I haven't really read anything. And I've been kind of wanting to get back in, and I started rereading some of the old stuff, and I was looking at stuff, and when they announced the High Republic, like, the whole idea when they first announced it intrigued me. Like, oh, get away from everything that offends everybody, uh, you know, with the legacy characters, and go somewhere new. And don't go back all the way to the old Republic and then offend all those people, like... We're going to go in between. But all the stuff in the marketing I saw just wasn't popping out of me. And I think, if anything, from what I wrote with this book, I'm going to say this is one you definitely don't judge this book by its cover. And Disney has let down the marketing on this. Lucasfilm was just bad, bad marketing. Because all the Jedi look boring. And all the pictures, they're just like, boom. I'm a Jedi in a robe, and they're not doing anything cool. They're not. We're not seeing them in battle. We're not. And yet they do a lot of cool stuff in this. You know, I look at how something like um, Big Finish does all these audio Doctor Who dramas, but when they do an audio drama, which isn't a visual thing, they do trailers and they do like concept art or little like mock-up art pages from like the shows and they're like, oh, here's this character and while they're speaking. And they do, they do a whole trailer that's almost like hand flipbook animated type thing uh, that gets you like, oh, that's like super, super hype. Like if they had done that for this book, like if they had shown like a little bit of the, like the audio and shown like a trailer with like the characters coming forth and like wow, I think people would have been hyped. I think if they'd 
released information about these people and their pronouns wasn't the main thing that was being like actually give depth and information on why this character is cool i think people were being like oh yeah that jedi is cool you know we got a trandoshan jedi like how cool is that why are you not leading with that um it just kind of odd to me but anyways back to extra techie so he's going through that, and he's kind of like, I noticed one of the things that was his criticism was one, they're focusing on like every little legacy character like Akbar and, and uh, Wedge and all, you know, and it's like yeah, they were kind of you know throwaway characters in Star Wars. Like why are we? Because at that point the universe was small. These were the only characters in the Star Wars, and everybody knew had to be set up. And but I I kind of thought that I was like. I noticed one of the things he says, you know, oh, they do this. Well, they do that in the High Republic, or they did that in the sequel trilogy, or they did it. Like, he was noticing that all of these things that are being praised in this book have been done elsewhere. And I would, I would retort that they were done to a lesser effect, you know. Uh, once something's been done and it's been done well, seeing it done again, but not, even if it's done just as well, but it's done differently. It's it's repetitive, you know. Just like the Force of Awakens, a lot of the story beats that were similar to A New Hope. That's not why that movie is kind of mm, why people are like ah, it's just A New Hope. And they go, well, it's flashy. It's just yeah, but we already have A New Hope, and so it was kind of like we already had the EU. We don't want to see the same stuff. Just kind of eh. It's flashier, it's bigger, it's newer, you know, with that. But from Max Texas' perspective, like, he's absorbed that first, and now he's coming back and said, oh, yeah, I, I could see that perspective. And he was pointing out how, like, this is what the what the High Republic is doing. The High Republic is setting up this bigger world, is setting up all these new characters and this and that. And that first Heir to the Empire is a lot about setting up characters that you don't have a love for until at least the second book. Like, a lot of those characters' personality and um, what you draws you to, like Mary Jade and all those, and uh, Talon Card, like, those characters don't really come alive till the second book, uh, even Thrawn. So, this is one of those things where it's like, okay, I said, you, please, please, you gotta read the trilogy. You can't just do one. That is just like judging, you know, any one of the Star Wars trilogies just off of the first movie. That it's you got to watch the whole because it's written as a trilogy, just broken in the three books. Uh, but it is one whole story. It's not like, oh, this is this, and this is just the next book that he uh, is one story. I I told uh, Sean, I said, you know, if you do that, you've already done one, I will do three High Republic books of your choosing. And so he chose this one, Star Wars The Light of the Jedi, uh, the next one I'll do is the Rising Storm and the La by Kevin Scott, and the last one is the uh, Fallen Star by Claudia Gray. Now, um, this one by Charles Soule. Don't know anything about him. Kevin Scott. I know I don't have great interactions with him on Twitter, but I'm not going to let that taint me. Claudia Gray is someone who I've enjoyed her work in the past, and I think she's a good writer, and I've had good experiences with her. Um, so I'm interested to see what she does, but I know there was some controversy about some stuff that she had in hers that I didn't agree with. So I'll be interested to see how I feel when I get there. But let's just kind of look at Star Wars uh, Light of the Jedi. Now, Light of the Jedi. Uh, now, first of all, I am going to link in the description Extra Techie's review of this because he's got pictures and all this stuff. I don't do editing. I am in between jobs or as it is when I'm supposed to be in bed and it's dark outside and I finally got the kids to bed and all that uh, coming out to the van and just spending a few minutes and just hit record and it goes up. No editing at all. I am way below <laughs> extra techie standards. So I'm going to put his video in there and get the proper review. But here is me, an OT fan, an EU fan, somebody who had sworn off the High Republic said, that looks dumb. Why am I going to waste my time with that? 
I came into this book. Now, I listened to the audiobook read by Mark Thompson. Mark Thompson always, always delivers a good reading. I'm going to tell you right off the bat. First off, they introduced so many characters, and I retained zero names. Now, because I listened to this as an audiobook, I, I thought about going back and trying to write them down, but I think even if I put them down on a piece of paper, I would forget which character name went to which character. That's the problem of at least in... Because I'm going to compare this a little bit to like the Thrawn trilogy. At least in that book, you had Luke, you had Leia, you had Chewie, you had Han, you had Lando. You, you already knew who Akbar was. You already know who Mon Mothma was. You know, you know who these characters are. Yes, they threw a whole bunch of new characters at you. But you slowly figured out which one of those. Like, I can't tell you any of the other... Other than Talon Card and Mara Jade, I can't tell you any of the other part. There were like five or six other main players in that whole pirate smuggler thing that I don't even remember. I I couldn't even tell you Thrawn's without looking it up. Thrawn's uh, the his like first in command under him. I can't remember that guy's name right now. He's a cool character. Liked him, enjoyed him, but I don't retain names. This at one point said the name Master Yoda. He doesn't appear in this book, but he was mentioned. That's the only name I recall. So, this is... You know, oh, and while well, we're, we're talking about names on the other one, um, Extra Take the Head a little bit. It is Master Sabaoth. And Master Sabaoth is uh he's just it's cool and you know i have a, a love for that one but yeah that's how you say it sabayoth um so the big thing in this the whole province now this is this is something that i know a lot of old republic guys which i was never able to get into the old republic i am one of those people that feels the need to be tied not necessarily to the Skywalkers, but I need it tied to the Rebellion versus the Empire. Uh, even the prequels, I had a hard time until the Clone Wars cartoon came out because they just didn't, didn't feel like Star Wars. There's something to me about seeing Stormtroopers and uh, you know X-Wings and stuff like that, that that feels innately like Star Wars. So when they stray too far from that, it, it stops feeling like Star Wars for me. This felt like Star Wars. And I know a lot of people are uh, a little bent out of shape because the Old Republic talks about all the shipping lanes and all that. And here we're only 400 years before, um, you know, the current prequels. And they're still figuring that out when we've already established in the Old, old Republic canon. Well... We got to massage the canon a little bit. Um, and we also don't exactly 100% understand how hyperspace lanes and stuff like that are working now. Like maybe we're changing the canon of the stuff now, not really the stuff back then. I don't know. I know that was an issue for some people, but it's not for me. I don't come in with that bias. Uh, despite being an EU fan, I am mostly an EU fan of the... Um, like, the stuff that's near and dear to my heart is all the stuff around Star Wars, uh, A New Hope, to Return of the Jedi, to, like, what was given for, like, the 10, 15, 20 years after Return of the Jedi that were in the EU books. That's the stuff. Uh, all Jedi's Luke Academy stuff and all the Jedi's that came up from that, the Solo kids. Like, that's the stuff that, to me, matters the most from the EU. Everybody has something different, but that's me. And so this isn't an era that doesn't conflict with any of that for me, and it doesn't... My my basic retaining... I read all the Old Republic books, but I only... I, I didn't play the video games and do the stuff that got everybody, like, super into them. Um, I ramble. If you haven't noticed, I ramble quite a bit. So let's start talking, actually, about this book, but... We start out, there's a whole problem with the hyperspace, that, you know, 
the this ship is coming through it's trying to avoid another ship that's just somehow in the hyperspace lane now this is something like if you were on a train track and suddenly there was another train just parked on the rail like that doesn't happen because this is all planned out the same with planes planes do this like they have to schedule whole flights and all that like when drone technology started letting drones get up in the air to levels that it could start affecting planes it became an issue because planes pretty much work on the fact that everybody has to prearrange so that people aren't just randomly flying into each other. Uh, it's not like you just have, oh, radar, oh, there's another plane, I need a veer. No, when you get off the ground, you have a charted flight path and you stay in that. Once you hit a certain altitude, you have to fly where you stated you were going to fly. Um, and it's critical that you do that. And that's kind of how these hyperspace lanes, like, like, they're never going to run into something because there's never going to be another ship just occupying the same lane, going the wrong way. Like, this is dedicated. This is me going this way. They'll never... And suddenly, they got something they got to avoid, and they try to do that, and they, they're they able to veer and miss it, but the action, like, rips their ship apart. The whole scene with the captain and the pilot and all that is just super heroic, super like i'm like all invested in that I mean, these are like just characters that are gone right after the beginning and then what happens like these things come out of hyperspace and like they're just world ending things hitting planets destroying them and the jedi are out there and like they're trying to deflect them off of planets they're trying to catch these pieces and slow them down like seeing them as work as a team trying to slow them down then you have the Nihil, and you know, there's the whole thing, oh, the Nihil, they're like this huge, uh, going to be a hassle for the Jedi, and it's like, how are they going to be a hassle for the Jedi? Like, they don't have the force. Just... And then when you find out, like, they're just the smugglers in this, well, it's the fact that they have hyperspace lanes that the Jedi can't. They, they can maneuver in and out and stuff in the Jedi. And when they were able, so the Nihil secretly did this, and, there, and there's all this in stabbing inside the Nihil uh, and an interesting structure that they put up the, 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 there's like this one person and they've got was it three lieutenants underneath them or four I think three three lieutenants underneath them always three so that no two would rise against them and they're up above and they're kind of like the tiebreaker of all three blah 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 um, so it was interesting that if and so each three of them gets, plus the head person gets a vote. And if it's a tie, then whoever the head person, whatever their vote was, it goes that way. So it takes um, actually three of them to all vote against the head person. And it was a unique payment structure that because of the infighting that it creates amongst them, they'll never try to supplant the leader. Because if they take out the leader, all three of them have equal claim, and no one of them is willing to work with any of the others. And it was interesting how they did that. The amount of heroics that they show the Jedi going through, the strain that they go through to save people is just amazing. And the way that they're having to go through like multiple Jedi, they're operating their ship, they're doing that, they're using the force, trying to slow this item down while, because if they just hook toll cables up to this thing to try to, to pull it on from the salvage ship, like it's going to rip right off. It's going so fast. So like just if you could just slow it down a few percent, it would it would make all the difference. And they're trying to do that. Now, one of the Nihil lieutenants, he's not thinking, he doesn't, he's not informed on the big plan, so he's thinking, we know where these things are going to come out. We could go bribe a planet. <laughs> and so, hey, we know where it's going to come and crash on your planet. We know one and we know where it's going to come from and we can stop it unless you pay us. And they failed to do it. They failed to save it uh, after getting paid. And that looked really bad for the Nihil because now pretty much the entire Jedi Order is after them. A lot of heat. A lot of heat on the Nihil. But at the same time, they're trying to figure out, like, how is this possible? How are these all, like, non-essential hyperspace travel? It's banned. The hold. 
we know how that goes over. There's there's mutiny. I mean, it's not like we just recently had a real world thing. Now, this book came out before this, but I mean, talk about we've recently had a world thing where production of stuff and readily availability of stuff has been held out because of um, some kind of world event that prevented people from being together in a giant warehouse uh, that made ships importing stuff have to wait out a period of quarantine before coming into port uh, that really, really hampered production and a lot of stuff like, uh, you know, your PS5s and stuff weren't available. The new iPhone was delayed, all this kind of stuff, all because of this this hot topic that the government felt they needed to do, that a lot of people didn't feel the government needed to do. The government felt that they didn't do, that millions would die, but they didn't do... You, know, you, you get what I'm saying. That There was this situation where the government's like, no, it's not safe. And all these people are like, we're having to eat rations. You know, we're eating our top ramen because you can't send in shipments of food. You know, we want our, our new hollow I images and stuff. We want We want this stuff, but... You know, the pleasure transport can't come in, the, the, the games transport can't come in because it's non essential. We're only getting like like emergency food delivered so we don't starve. Um and people are upset and then so you have like politicians who are really pushing for that. It's just it's all going in. Uh it's just fun. It's just real fun. And um I've gotta say that what really got to me was how like a Jedi the Jedi felt. Like they felt pure. They didn't feel tainted like when Palpatine was tricking them and they were fighting a war. These were Jedi coming in, honestly helping ones. And I think they had a young Jedi, you know, and he's getting thrown out of a plane, being trot to catch himself, and he was failing at it and that. But then later on, like, he had his moment. He got to shine. He learned it, and he saved people. They, um had a family that like some Nihil smugglers were trying to, to abduct and like the whole chase of the Jedi. And they had this one older Jedi that was kind of older, but he, like he was like a super master and like they got two snipers on this guy and they shot his horse. And then he's out there and a man who would shoot the horse and not the rider told me everything I needed to know that you are deserving of your fate. Boom, and he's like, ching, ching, just blocking everything, taking these guys out, like, just wrecking shop with them. Meanwhile, the other Jedi, like, going, putting on the, the saving this family, they get on board, taking captive. So many Jedi, like, not all their stories ended happily. Like, there was a lot of Jedi that you, you just as you start to hear, they heroically sacrifice themselves or get put in a really horrible position. Um, and so, like, there were some tearjerker moments. Like, And that's like, I can't remember these people's names. But I was genuinely sad when they died. That's good writing. That's good storytelling. This affected me. I gotta say, none of that emotion, none of that comes across in any of the promotional material. Generic bios a very simplistic generic no distinguishing real features you know young super slender blonde woman young human black male like most of them weren't even aliens most of them were this and their bios were like non-existent there are tons of Jedi with like super cool like bits of information they could be throwing on like their bio information when they're like, oh, this is this Jedi and he's known for this and this. And he's because they given like little bits of their backstory, that wouldn't have been a spoiler for the book. They should have done better with the marketing. Because this book is cool. Now, um the end battle where like they're battling the Nihil. And then Nihil, one of their things is that, that they have someone, and maybe they're forcing them, but they're able to determine the hyperspace lanes, generating all these new paths that once discovered the computers can do. But they're bouncing around here, there, boom, 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 boom. Uh, all this different stuff, really cool. Um, 
this is the kind of stuff that was what gives them a vantage over the Jedi. Is that, like, in space, when they're traveling in space, the Jedi can't predict them because they're popping in and out of hyperspace. Boom, I'm here. No, boom, I'm here. Like, instant teleportation. Um, this was good. This was really good. This is, um, definitely I recommend this book. Um, if you're somebody who was sleeping on, and I think it's even free on my Kindle right now. So go check it out if you want to read it. I really like the audiobook. Mark Thompson does a great job. If you're somebody who doesn't like doing a lot of reading and you've been like, ah, the high road, he's definitely a person. I say go over and check this book out. Now here's the next thing. The next book is The Rising Storm. Now I'm, I'm in a hype mode. This is by Kevin Scott. And I've seen a lot of the stuff that's been negative has come off of this and Claudia's. Um, all about uh, the guy who was a rock that's a pilot and is very sexual. Whatever. Not looking forward to that character, Geode. Um, I'm hoping that, like, I'm just getting the bias side. If this is like the sequel trilogy, if these books do not, because this is the storybooks, like, master plan. Like, they obviously weren't working on making sure that all the uh, all the sequel movies went together, and they certainly weren't interfering with like the Kenobi show and all the in you know stuff like that. No, but supposedly they've what the story group has been doing is locking themselves in a room and like planning out the High Republic. I'll be interested to see if I feel the same way about The Rising Storm, or if the change of writer, change in style, change in story, if this will go somewhere completely different. Because, like, Timothy Zahn wrote that whole trilogy. That was one story that he thought out and sold as three separate books. But it was one complete story. More of a one story than George. Like, George, you go, okay, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, that was a combined story. But when he made A New Hope... He kind of had an outline for a whole trilogy, but he didn't think he was going to get to make the other two. So he kind of took stuff from Return of the Jedi, put it in A New Hope, compiled it all together, and kind of made that as a standalone thing. But he initially intended there to be no Death Star run at the end of that, and it to be a whole trilogy ending with a Death Star run, um, was in his initial thought. And if you look at it that way, that like that's kind of what Timothy Zahn did. Like His first book doesn't have... A huge climactic ending. It has more of a uh, 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 Empire Strikes Back type ending. It's like ah, things are looking bad, or you know. So, and the second book's even worse. Like they're really in the fire, and it's the third book that has all oh, the triumph of the heroes. I'll be interested to see how, because. In a lot of ways, this feels complete. This feels like it has a beginning, middle, and end. They took it. The Nihil had a thing. Like, there was a master plan, and in the end, that worked out. But the whole thing's coming out of hyperspace, and that hyperspace threat there, that feels like it's completed. Most of the Nihil bad guys were eliminated. Now, that did was one of those things that it made one person the ultimate bad guy. But... For the most part, it feels like a completed story um, with just an open that this is a universe that other people can play on. Not like this is a story told over three books. So I'll be interested to see if I read the next book and I still feel the same way or if that gives me off the feel that I've been getting from the High Republic. Because I'm not against diversity, but everything from the things kind of felt like that's what it was going to be about. Even though a lot of the people in the front of the books just look like humans and not a lot of aliens, which to me felt undiverse in a universe like Star Wars that has so many diverse characters. And we had a Trandoshan and we had a Wookiee Jedi, a young Wookiee Padawan Jedi. How cool was that? Let's just, oh, there was a moment when he's trying to talk to a young boy who was explaining his story about how because he was fooling around on the ship that crashed and broke up. He was hacking some stuff. He thought it was his fault. 
He was blaming himself for his parents' death. And that young Wookiee, he couldn't, he couldn't, the kid couldn't understand it, but he, he put his, oh, that, it's just good, good writing. Um, I'm going to look at Charles Soule. I'm, I want to look at what other books he's done outside of the High Republic, too, because he is going on my list of Star Wars writers that I want to pay attention to. I know Claudia Gray has done some books that I, too, really like, so I'm interested in her book, but Kevin Scott, I have not been a big fan of his, so he's the next one, but I am going to put all that bias aside, just like I did with this. I came in with a bias, but I said, nope, I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to do Sean Wright, because I want him to do that with the Thrawn trilogy, because that I love so much, so I'm like, I need to do that for this, and so far, High Republic's doing good for me. Anyways, that's my check out extra techies uh video in the description below on his extra star wars uh channel because uh he's gonna have a much less rambling and more making sense than my review but uh or barring that go check out the official release either on kindle or on audible because uh it's some good stuff all right i'll catch you in the next video